Hey guys, it's Jonathan over American Off-Road Customs. I'm actually really excited to get to nerd out a little bit today. Uh, we're going to talk about this 392 Rubicon, so 2024 behind me here. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about um, horns. What we're talking about today is horns, and that's what I'm really excited about. So, what a portal is, for those who don't know, is a way to relocate where the wheel mounts on the straight axle down from the straight axle shaft. And that is good because you can essentially get your diff up higher clearance and fit a bigger tire without having to change anything else. And that's really good for someone who doesn't really want to change all the suspension or spend the investment on you know, one ton axles and stuff like that to be able to fit a big tire. And that's great for someone like this that wants to have a nice high clearance, big tire vehicle to be able to go camping, mild off-roading, not really great for rock crawling in this particular package because you don't get that long travel suspension that you normally get with what we would do with most vehicles, which is a suspension lift. When you do a suspension lift, you're changing all these components in here to lower the axle to make more room for big tire in here. And that gives you that lift that you talked about. But in conjunction with that, you get a longer travel shock. And so you get much more travel out of the suspension than you would compared to a stock type suspension. So portals have seen that, I said, achieve that lift by lifting it down here instead of in the spring in the shock stuff. So we're gonna talk about how that works and what that what goes into that. And the other neat thing about this is you can safely run a bigger tire without having to upgrade the pumpkin to a 60, stuff like that, because you're moving the stress point from the diff and these axle shafts inside here out to the outside in the portal boxes, there's more reduction out mm -hmm. here. So that's where the, the load happens and that's what these are built to handle. So there's a lot of stuff that kind of goes into it, really making this work well. And when we do this, we're putting more stress on the axle. So we're gonna upgrade things like the ball joints and we're gonna reinforce the tubing with some truss and seek us and some stuff like that so that the housing and the parts that are gonna take that stress are reinforced to be able to handle the added leverage that's being put on them by the, by the portal. So we come over here, we're gonna get an idea of what this looks like. So this is the kind of put together appearance of what this looks like. So this is like the knuckle that will go on in place of the factory knuckle. So the ball joint goes in here, drag link, tie rod, those connect in these places. And this like outline that you can see right here, this is where the factory axle shaft comes out. And down here is where the new center of the wheel is. You can see you're getting this like five inches of drop that's on there. The other thing you're getting is a lot of width increase. So this is giving you that wider stance that you would also benefit from a one ton axle setup. Now inside of here, you have all these gears. And so this is where the reduction happens. So basically this Jeep has 373 gears from the factory. Now not doing anything to the pumpkin and just putting these on, it will convert the Jeep to basically feel like it's got a 455 axle or gear ratio in there instead of the 373s. And because it's doing it out here, all that load and stress is in here. And so what happens is the shaft that comes out of the axle tube is gonna go into this upper bearing down here. And when this rotates, it's gonna spin all these gears inside here. Now these are kind of like idlers because this wants to spin this way. And if you just went straight into this one, it would spin the wrong way. So drive would become reverse and we don't want that. So we have to do a four gear setup. And that's what this is here. So now as this turns, you can see you're spinning all these things. So that these two are spinning the same direction and you maintain all the right rotational stuff that's going on there. Now these things are all billet. So they are very stout, very strong. They essentially are like another differential. So there's a breather tube. There's an oil fill spot here. This is the other half of that knuckle that's going to get bolted on to the backside here but you got to put this on the vehicle first. So this will essentially go right up here like this. So you can see as we line these pieces up, 
it moves that center down here. And so I'll also get different brakes because this also converts the five lug that comes on the JK or the JLs and the JKs to an eight on a six and a half. So this is a one ton hub. So this is also bigger and stronger to be able to handle bigger, heavier tires. So we got two piece rotors. These are really light. Can't see it in the video, but compared to normal rotors and stuff, these are really lightweight. So I mean, they're just nothing to this. So very nice, very high quality. I believe those are Will Woods. There's also gonna be some calipers around here somewhere that go with that. I'm not sure if we've opened those up yet. So it's getting all new brakes along with that. These are the ball joints that we're gonna be putting in there. They're uh, metal plug rebuildable baller joints. So much heavier duty than the factory ones. And then if we wanna follow me this way, we'll look at the back of this stuff. We gotta do the same thing in the rear. Now this Jeep has full float axles from the factory. So we're not really converting that part, but if yours didn't, then what we would normally would see here is the shaft would come out and there'd be a bearing and a, all the studs and everything would be bolted right to the end of that axle, axle shaft. On this case, you get full float shafts, which look like these. So this is essentially what slides into the pumpkin then this part would slide into the portal box inside here. And this is gonna spin when you drive and then that's gonna spin those gears that you saw over there and spin this, this uh, hub over here. So even though this one already has those on this, so we're not converting that feature, but we are gonna make sure that these are fit for these portal boxes in the back. So really cool stuff. We're gonna reinforce the rear axle with a truss back here as well. We're going to, you know, upgrade the brakes and all that stuff in the back as well. You can see all the nuts and bolts and seals and all the things that kind of go into making this work. Get new ABS sensors, new brake line fittings, vent tubes, all that stuff. All right, so even though we are putting these portal boxes on here, you still get to keep your e-brake. It just works a little bit different. The original ones have kind of like drums inside of here that grab the inside of this rotor. That's not going to work in this case. So this uses a different style where it's basically applying pad pressure to the caliper. So you still get your e-brakes, don't worry about losing that. So even though you're doing all these modifications, it should still work fully original the way that the factory intended. Anyway, so stay tuned. So I want to talk, I want to show this when we get it all done. This is going to be on 40s, by the way, with stock suspension to put that in perspective. And there's not going to be any modification required to the fenders or anything like that to be able to fit those. I wanted to just do a little mid progress check in on this portal build we got going together so you can kind of see uh, how it looks on the vehicle. So at this point, we've got the axle all trussed and reinforced. We've got the C gussets on here and the upgraded ball joints installed. So with this in here, now you can really get an idea of how much of a drop you get. Because there's where the factory axle comes through, and now it's dropping it down, way down here. It's also pushing this out quite a bit, because if this hub would have been way up in this spot. So you get a lot of drop and a lot pushed out here. And this will tie into your tie rods, so it'll turn you know, just normal like you normally would. So it's gonna be cool to see this thing on the ground, so stay tuned. We just set this Jeep down. Now, if you've been following us along with this build, this is the Jeep that we've been working on that has the portals on it. And I wanted to take a minute just to show what the real difference is now that this is sitting on the ground. So this is sitting on 40 inch tires, still has the factory suspension, so no suspension lift at all on this. And you can see that these tires clear the wheel wells with no problem. They obviously stick out quite a bit more than the factory does. But the biggest thing I wanna showcase is the clearance of the axle to the ground. Now this is the main advantage you get with doing a portal on your Jeep is the distance between the differential to the ground. So this has 17 inches between the bottom of that diff to the ground and only 16 inches between here and the ground. So quite a bit of clearance compared to what you would get. Now for comparison, over here we have another Jeep that's on 40s. This is a JK, so it's a little bit different, but it still has the same 44 pumpkin that that one does. And it's 13 and a half inches of clearance between the bottom of that diff and the ground. And he's actually modified his 
mounts over here so they actually have more clearance than normal but 13 and a half 17 over there this is on 40 inch tires also so that's the big advantage of doing board.